What's up guys, Moe's here again. Today I'm going to be bringing you not a box update video, but instead I'm gonna be doing a box FAQ, uh, talking about some questions that I've been receiving um, about the box from other box users, from people who uh, are interested in the box, from people who know nothing about the box, from commentators who want to learn more about the box. Um, so I'm gonna be going through a lot today. Um, and then after the FAQ section about the box versus GameCube controller, um, I'm going to be talking about the box versus Smashbox very briefly. Um, I'm waiting to hear back from Cameron, who works for the Hitbox team. Uh, he's going to be sending me over a whole lot uh, more information and more material um, about the Smashbox. So that way I can make a separate video uh, talking specifically about the differences between the Smashbox and the box and also uh, their mindset, their logic and everything behind the Smashbox. Um, so without further ado, we're going to get into talking about the box. Okay, so as we get into this conversation of the analog stick on a game controller versus the buttons on a box, uh, what we need to understand first is that the game controller has a circle uh, turned into a octagon because of the shell. And in the circle, uh, the analog stick can go everywhere that the shell allows it to. Um, meaning, you know, you press slight, you walk, you press full, and you dash. Um, everyone knows this, and that's how gaming controls work. Um, whereas the box, as you can see, doesn't exactly have 20 different buttons to be able to hit every single uh, input inside of the entire game control shell. So inside of this circle, the box has decided that there are three areas. Um, and I'm gonna go over that now and how they work. So on the box, our cardinal directions are uh, right pinky finger is up, um, left ring finger is left, our left hand middle finger is down, and our left hand index finger is right. Now these cardinal directions are the equivalent to full right on a game controller, full left on a game controller, full down, and full up. Um, so what has to happen is that the cardinal directions, if they want to do something that isn't all the way inside of that coordinate, is you need to press a modifier button and the modifier will change uh, inside of what coordinate you are at. So if I press right um, on the box, I dash, but if I press modifier right, I walk. Um, if I press the other modifier left, then I do a slightly faster walk. Um, those are the three coordinate sections. If you want to know the exact coordinates uh, that the box hits when they press the modifier button, um, I would definitely recommend checking out the manifesto. It has all of that in greater detail, um, but for the layman, the modifiers allow you to reach different points inside of the coordinate. Uh, there are only two modifiers, um, and even if you were to somehow press both of them, uh, the, them together does nothing. Uh, it is just the three options that you have. So those are the modifier buttons, and we're gonna talk about reactivation next. All right, so for this section, I want to talk about the box's uh, requirements to reactivate uh, the button before it allows you to go in that direction. So to start off this segment, I'm going to show you how dashing on a GameCube controller works. Uh, this is gonna be very obvious, but bear with me. So if I wanna to go to the right, and then I wanna to go to the left, I have to, while dashing, I press full right, full left, right? I just do that. And that's how you dash back and forth, is by going back and forth between uh, full left and full right on the game controller's shell. So in the box, it's the same exact thing. If I want to go full right, I press right, left, right, left. And that's how I dash. Now, if I press full right and I don't let go, and then I press left, I will dash left um, and I will keep dashing left. So I'm gonna go full right, not let go and go left. And then, you know, if I let go of both of them, it'll stop. Um, but something that hacks in the box team did specifically um, because they knew that this would be broken and it wouldn't make sense in comparison to a game controller is that if I press right, hold it, tap left to go left and then still I'm holding right, I won't dash back to the right. So as you can see here, I'm gonna hold right, tap left, let go, and I'm still holding right, uh, but I'm standing still. And that's because 
they implemented something where if you press two opposite cardinal directions, you will go the one that you had most recently pressed. So in that case, it was the left side. Um, and then it will not reactivate the right side unless you tap it again. Um, this is because on a GameCube controller, if I went left uh, and then I pressed right, to go left again, I have to move the stick to the left. Um, so it makes no sense for the box to be able to hold down a cardinal direction, tap a different one, and then go back to the cardinal direction that it's still holding. Um, doesn't make sense on a game controller, and uh, this is something specifically that the box team thought would be broken and knew would be broken, uh, so they don't allow it. Um, and I think that is something that is very important to know while we go into these other sections about um, DI and tilts and things like that. All right, so for this section, we're actually going to be looking at the box's manifesto to um, explain DI because uh, being able to see the chart for slight DI helps a lot with understanding um, how the box's slight DI and DI options are a bit limited. So uh, as we were talking about earlier, the game controller is a analog stick and has um, every value in inside of it, uh, everywhere that the stick can go, it is a input in the game. Uh, the box controller has the four buttons and the four buttons go to the most extreme sides of the game controller, meaning you have to use modifiers to get somewhere in between. Um, and as you can see here uh, on the screen, that if you press right mod two, otherwise known as mod X uh, plus A, you get um, this slight DI. And if you press mod one and A, you get this uh, slightly further DI. Um, and then the two other points are just using cardinal directions. Uh, um, so yes, so this is how DI works. Um, and this is something that Hacks has talked about uh, oftentimes, how DIing on the box is not good. Uh, and he's had terrible DI for years now. Um, and I would agree. I do think at a high level, uh, the box is a bit at a disadvantage here with its slight DI and DI options just because they're so limited. Um, but the box team did think that more options would be unfair because you can hit these perfectly um, and you can hit them consistently. Um, so having four gives you uh, a fair number of them. Um, but if you were to have more, like say eight, um, that would be unfair just because you'd be able to hit all eight of those accurately every single time. Whereas with the GameCube controller, uh, there is some um, degrading that can happen to the case. There is, you know, uh, mess ups where you slightly hold a little too far, you slightly hold a little too in, um, and you cannot hit the same value every single time um, because of human error and because of game controllers not being uh, the best made uh, controllers there are. So this was the happy medium that the box team came up with was four places uh, that you can DI, um, and here's how to do them. All right, so in this section, we're going to talk about how to do tilts on a box. So in a GameCube controller, the way you do a tilt is you hold slight direction and you press A, uh, and your tilt comes out in the direction you're holding. Um, the other way you can do a tilt is you can buffer it, uh, and you buffer it in a lot of different ways. Um, but most often, you know, you'll buffer it after an aerial. Um, and that is how you will do a tilt in one of those two ways. You either hold slight that direction or you buffer it. And the same exact thing is true on the box. So as we talked about the modifiers, the modifiers are what allow us to do slight directions um, and or if you want to call it walking. Um, so if I press the modifier and I press right and I press A, then I get my tilt. Uh, and this is the equivalent as slightly holding in right on a game controller and pressing A. Um, and then the other way is by uh, buffering it, um, just like we were talking about earlier. And so, you know, you can buffer it out of a jump, you can buffer it out of an aerial, um, the same exact thing as a game controller. This is actually one of the areas where I think the game controller and the box are um, extremely similar because um, on a game controller, doing tilts out of dash um, are a technical thing, and on the box, doing tilts out of a dash is a technical thing. Um, 
And honestly, I am not very good at doing tilts out of dash on a game controller or on a box. Uh, but the basic idea for doing it on the box is um, you dash, so you would dash, and then you would have to like stop dash, uh, press modifier, and then press the angle. Um, so it would look something, something a little more fluid than that. Um, but I think that this is a place where the box and the game controller are actually extremely similar. Um, is that the, the ways that you do tilts uh, are difficult on both, I would say, um, on a standpoint of how difficult the easiest tech is. Uh, tilts is not something that the box has made easier, um, and it is not something that is easier done on a game controller than versus a box. So this is actually an area where I think the balancing is nearly perfect between the two. All right. So before we get into it, um, another disclaimer that I want to make is I am not making this video to say that the box is harder or that the GameCube controller uh, doesn't have advantages or anything like that or that the box doesn't have advantages. I'm making this video because I haven't seen an FAQ of the box on YouTube um, and I have been getting a lot of questions. And so uh, instead of, you know, just responding to the one person nicely and having a private conversation, I decided to make this video and talk about the differences between the box and the GameCube controller. Um, the differences all can be summed up to analog buttons versus digital buttons and the limitations um, of the number of buttons that are on the box. Um, so with that, we're gonna go into the first analog difference, which is shield. So a GameCube controller, you shield with your triggers, L and R, uh, and your triggers can be depressed more and more, and when they're fully depressed, they do the full shield like that. Um, but if you very lightly press it, you get this light shield, and then as you depress it more and more, you get all the way to the full hard shield. Now, with the box, these are your triggers right here, L and R, L and R, um, and as you can see, if I press it, I get the full shield. Uh, now there are ways to get light shield. So you press L or R and then you press the mod button and you get full light shield. Um, you can also get a second light shield size. So you press L or R and you press the second mod and you get the medium light shield. Now, um, I don't think this is a advantage in the way of the GameCube controller because I don't think that light shield size um, makes the biggest of differences. I will say it can make a difference, and I will say that it does in certain situations, um, but I don't think that anyone would ever say uh, the reason Zane won Genesis was because he three-quartered light shield versus HBox instead of full light shielding. Um, so because of that, I don't think the GameCube controller and the box have a major discrepancy uh, between their shield sizes. Um, now, as for options out of shield, um, I think the GameCube controller has a bit easier time doing options out of shield um, just because of the reason that um, on a game controller, and I hope you can see it in the webcam, um, on the game controller, your analog stick is here, right? Uh, and it has all the directions and your triggers are up here. And so you use uh, very different um, fingers and things. Oh, I killed myself, let's see. You use very different fingers to do all these things. And when you're making options out of shield, uh, the four, these four buttons are always available and you don't really have to shift to move um, or anything like that. Even if you just do regular controller hold, um, doing something out of shield is as easy as just using your thumb. You don't have to move your hand or anything like that to pre-pressing different buttons. Whereas on the box, um, if I'm holding shield and I want to wave dash out of shield, um, the best way to do it is to use this jump button and this is my other shield button. Um, so I have to lift my hand from these four rows right here, up here a bit, uh, to do the wave dash, if I can, uh, to do the wave dash. Um, and that is uh, kind of keeping me a bit from being able to wave dash out of shield into aerial very quickly. Um, obviously with time, you get way better at it when you see hacks do anything out of shield. It's very fluid, just like with a GameCube controller. Um, but that is something in the beginning of using a box that uh, is way harder than when you learn how to wave dash out of shield aerial um, on a game controller, in my 
in my personal opinion. I don't think there's a competitive advantage there for the GameCube controller. Um, it is just something to keep in mind if you're commentating a set um, and someone's using the box. Uh, their out of shield game might not be as strong um, because of the uh, limited options, meaning that you have to you have to move your hand a bit to be able to wave dash out of shield. So you see a lot of box users aerial out of shield instead uh, because their four fingers are here and your thumb is able to reach all the C-stick buttons down here. <clears throat> here we are at uh, probably the most talked about part of the box, and that is the box's Firefox angles. Uh, with Hacks being the best and most notable box player, um, a lot of people see his Fox doing Firefox angles and wondering, is that broken? Is that real? Uh, is that always been that way, yada yada. And so this chart right here shows you every single Firefox angle you can hit and what buttons you need to press to hit that angle. Um, MX and MY stand for the two modifiers down here, and then C, D, C, L, C, R, and C, U all talk about uh, the control, the four control stick um, directions down here. So as you can see, uh, there's a lot of angles there, um, but there are even more angles that you can hit with the GameCube controller. The reason that these angles specifically were picked by Hacks in the Box team is because these were the angles they felt a GameCube controller can consistently hit uh, while playing on UCF. Um, this actually does not include the perfect Firefox angle uh, that exists if you have a GameCube controller uh, that is modded um, because they thought it would be unfair to have that angle um, and have it be one that you can consistently hit. Uh, whereas a game controller can only hit perfect Firefox angles if it's been modded um, and if it has no uh, degradation, meaning it's been used a lot and the angles or mod has now been grinded down a little bit. So this is where the team landed with. Um, I would, if I'm a commentator or anything like that, I would definitely study this graphic um, so that we, we all can, uh, we can stop thinking that these angles are extremely easy to hit uh, or that these angles um, are impossible angles because if we watched any Fox with a GameCube controller, we've seen them hit these angles plus some. Um, and as you can see, the 45 angle is not reachable. Uh, it's just showing you where the 45 angle degree is. So here's the Firefox angles you can do and how to do them. All right, here comes the most controversial part of the video uh, and the part where I'm sure someone's going to have a different opinion than me on it. Um, but I'm going to go over this very briefly, and I'm going to save this topic um, for another time because I have reached out to the Hitbox team and I have asked them for some comments on certain things, um, as well as I've reached out to Hacks and the Box team for certain comments on things. Um, and then I'm going to try and come and make a unbiased as possible video separately um, about the Smashbox versus the Box. Um, and if they should both be legal, if either of them should be legal, uh, and the purposes that they both serve. But to uh, just be very general and very brief, um, the biggest difference between the two is the box um, has been made with Melee specifically in mind. Um, obviously, Hacks being the Melee legend that he is, created the box um, to serve as a new controller for Melee. And so it has a lot of things uh, about Melee thought about um, and thought through. The Smashbox uh, was also created um, with the intention of being used for Melee, uh, but has now seen a lot more success in the Smash Ultimate world. Uh, so a lot of things that they're catering to seem to be um, more towards Smash Ultimate. Um, so the two do sort of service different communities, um, which explains some of the things uh, that one can do and the other can't. Um, but again, I'm going to go over that in a different video. The other massive difference is that the box um, is unremappable. So the box, you can uh, buy it and you can download updates that the box team comes out with, um, but the latest update or whatever patch you want to use, um, which is always recommended that you use the most up-to-date patch, um, is the patch that you use. You can't go into the software and you know make the up button the A button and the A button the up button. Uh, the box is used as it is, whereas the Smash box is fully remappable uh, and their software is uh, pretty easy to use um, and pretty 
it's pretty quick to change things on as far as I've seen. Um, and so the mindset between the two teams is the box team um, is very uh, sure that they know what is fair and they have tested a lot of things and there's a lot of different patches uh, that they've used like casually to try and see if things are unfair. Um, and then they get to a point as we've seen in a lot of um, the earlier things we talked about, they get to a point where they think it's pretty fair. So for example, the slight DI, um, the decision to make only four different types of DI uh, was intentional by the team. They could have included more modifiers or they could have allowed more button uh, inputs to equal more places on the coordinate plane, but they felt four was fair. Uh, whereas the Smashbox uh, has a different mindset on that. Um, and what I've been told from Hitbox Cameron, someone who works in Hitbox, is that uh, their software is made so that way people can change um, the settings and the angles and the layout uh, to equal the tournament that they're going to. Um, whether or not I agree with that, I'm going to save for a separate video. Um, and I am still waiting on more information from Cameron as to how easy it is to check those angles and check those modifiers and check uh, the button layout and things like that on the smash box. Um, and he said he will get back to me. So I'm reserving all judgment and I'm just talking about um, the mindsets behind these two things. So uh, to recap the box, very, very melee focused and very much um, the team behind it believes that they have come up with the most fair way and the most um, legal way to use the box and the smash box wants to put it in the hands of the people to abide by the rules of the specific tournaments that they go to. Um, that's all I will say for now. If anyone from the hitbox team um, and if the people from the box team are watching this, please DM me on Discord or Twitter um, and give me more of your thoughts about the legality of your own product. Um, and I will make a separate video talking about the two. So that should do it for the video, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any other questions or if I didn't cover anything well enough, uh, please leave a comment down below. Um, it's very difficult to go into uh, a lot of detail for these things. Um, and I wanted to make a general video about uh, all of the technical things um, that happen in Melee and that you do on the box in a brief way so that way some people can have some idea of what it is. And then uh, when more questions arise or more specific questions arise, um, I can make another video about that and spend some more time on each individual topic. So that'll do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you'd like. Um, follow me on Twitter. Tell me how good of or bad job you think I did. Uh, whatever you'd like to do, I'd love to talk to you. So have a good rest of your day.